Hey guys, welcome back. In this video we're going to talk about Red Emperor. Um, as I said, I'll do a, a bit of a spill on Red Emperor from back in the day when I was a pro fisherman. Um, give you some, oh, they're pretty much, they really are basic tips on how to go catch yourself a nice feed of reds. Okay? Um, when I was down the Gold Coast, a lot of people were heading up to the Swains, okay? Uh, from Brisbane, Sunshine Coast, heading up to the Great Barrier Reef and the Swains and everything else. And everyone's looking for a red. People want to catch a red emperor. It's just one of those prize fish somebody wants to catch. If you haven't caught one, you want to catch your first one on the reef. If you have caught them, you want to catch a bigger one. Because most people catch them around, you know, 8 kilo, 6 to 8 kilo on a smaller size. You don't hear of too many over 10. Okay? And the guys that do catch them over 10 are quite good at it and do it all the time. And they won't tell you a damn thing. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is just give, you a, give away a few tips on, say, fishing out around the swains in what we call the paddock. So between land and the actual reef, I um, mean between the two when I was a pro fisherman, we used to call that section the paddock. Okay, it's fairly flat ground. We're not always out going out looking for reef. We're not looking for big bumpies and stuff for reefs. You will catch them on reef, but you'll catch them on the flat ground too because they are a grazing fish. They'll go on the flat ground grazing and looking, okay? So we used to chase them when we were in, uh, in the paddock. And we used to fish between 40 and 60 metres of water. Most of the time you'll find most of the reds in the deeper part of that, you'll find around 55 to 65 metres, okay? But we have caught them in as shallow as 40 metres, and some guys have caught them shallower. But usually around 40 to 60 is a safe bet to start looking for some reds, okay? And don't always look for the reef, not always. You will find them on reef at times, but generally when you find them on the reef, so be one or two or three fish, you won't find a big school of them. And we used to go hunting the schools, obviously, okay? So, what I've got, I've got my old trusty whiteboard over here. Um, I'll show you guys shortly with a few tips and a couple of diagrams, a couple of different ways to chase the reds. But before we get to that, I'm just going to show you some basic gear now to go out and chase them. If you are heading up the swains, you're going to want some fairly sturdy tackle. Two reasons. First reason, reds do pull hard. If you're after a big one, the big ones really do pull, like, pull hard. So, I suggest spin roll or overhead, personal choice but use anywhere from 50 pound to 80 pound outfits. And I'm not kidding, um, these things pull hard. And the second reason is, when you find reds, tiger sharks aren't far away. I've learned that over the years. Where you find, especially if you find a big school of reds, there's not, there's a tiger nearby. Tiger sharks love eating red emperor. It's a shame, but they really do. So, two reasons to fish heavy. First is to stop them, you know, try and turn them, get them up, because they do go really hard. And second of all is with the heavier gear, try and bully them to the boat, get them away from getting the, top, the tiger sharks. If the sharks show up and beat you, just leave guys. Don't try and catch another one and beat the sharks, you'll never beat the sharks. All you're going to do is waste fish. If the sharks show up, just cut your losses and leave and go find another spot. And I mean miles away. If you just putt around close, looking for another school close, the tigers will follow you and they will, they will stay with you. So put the hammers down, go a few miles, go somewhere else. Just don't waste the fish, you don't waste your time. Okay. Um, next thing I'll say when you're fishing for them, here's a really big tip. Reds love current. Okay. I can't say this enough. I know a few of you guys are going to disagree and say, I've caught reds without current. Well, you might have caught one or two when there's, and it's quite slow fishing when there's no current. But if you want to get a few numbers and have a fun day, fish current. And the stronger the current, the better the fishing for reds. Okay, I'm not lying. Even though it's very hard fishing, some of the currents I used to fish as a pro fisherman it was ridiculous. I mean, the currents are screaming. But when I show you the method on the board and tell you what to do, it's not too bad, and you will catch quite a few fish doing it. Okay, so we'll get to that board shortly. Next one is the rigs are easy. You just want a paternoster rig. So sink on the bottom, one or two hook rig. That's personal choice for you. Um, I like a two hook rig, but it's up to you. You very rarely catch two reds at a time anyway. If you did, you probably you won't land them. Not big ones anyway. Um, you can run single hook or double hook, but I just prefer a double hook with two baits. Because when we're doing this, we're fishing a certain way. We want the little pickers to come in, pick at your bait, and then the bigger reds will come to you. And I'll explain that shortly on the board in little diagrams. You trust your little uh, pencil diagrams, you'll love them. Okay, so paternoster rigs work well. Some heavy outfits, I'm going to say run at least 80 to 100 pound litre. Oh, it doesn't matter what litre it is, as long as it's a hard coating. Don't run supple, okay? Run something with a hard coating. 
that's what I'm going to say. Just hard coding, just from the rubbly bottom, you know, and they're crushing teeth of the reds and all the little pickers, and you don't know what's down there with the teeth and how roughed up your bird is going to get. It's just something that hard coding. A rough. I run 80 pounds. I like the Tiger because it's actually a thin 80, but it's very strong. 80 to 100. Some guys will say no less than 100, but I just don't like 100 because if you do, you get snagged. Uh, 100's really hard to break. 80 is a bit easier. The thread won't break it. Oh, no, not unless there's something wrong with it. They're not going to break 80 unless there's something wrong with your leader or you're not. Okay. And with the pattern losses, guys, keep them simple. Don't put beads on them, don't put tubes and stuff. You don't need it. You're just going to waste it fishing around structure. Even when you're on a flat bottom, there are a few rocks and bits and pieces around. You might get snagged, you're going to lose it to sharks, um, bigger fish are going to break you off. You'll catch, you'll hook all sorts of things for chasing red emperor. Especially, um, what are those, I can't think now. Hey, oh, bugger, I can't think of the name. They're usually like a red, uh, orange colour. Uh, you can't keep them. And they pull like the clappers too. And we used to catch them from this up to like this, big ones. And they're in the area where reds are, where you find them. Chinaman fish, Chinaman. If you find Chinamen, guys, don't leave. A lot of people think, like, Chinamen, you can't keep them, you know, sick of tower and everything else. Might as well leave. Don't. Reds and Chinamen are usually in the same sort of area. If you catch Chinamen, stay. There'll be Reds there somewhere. Okay, there's a little tip as well. And don't get fancy with the rigs. Like I said, you just want a pad of Usually we run, like, a 16-ounce snapper leg because we're fishing roughly about 60 metres. And I like fishing high current. And then two hooks. And the hooks we use on the pro boats are heavier than this, but the hooks I'll use on rods. Just get some BKKs and some ADOs, okay? Do some ADOs and they're circles. Make sure they're circles. Circles are really good. And as you guys know, you don't strike with circles and reds and stuff. So reds will suck on a little way and then start pulling. And as when they start moving away, you just feel it. Just with the rod, just start lifting the rod. And the circle will do its job. The circle will come out of its mouth, curl around and go to the corner. And then the right of red will just take off. You'll just see beyond. Circles are very good, okay? Especially if you want to release a few fish. And reds do release fairly well, okay? Circles and the eight O's. And once again, go from the front through. So when you're fishing, the hook's pointed back in towards you. Okay? It just works better. You get a bit better hook up rate this way. Okay? I'll explain that in another video. So just a sinker, two hooks, no beads, no limo, nothing like that. You don't need to be fancy. Okay, and before we get to the board, I'm going to show you a couple of my outfits, and then after the board, I'm going to show you the bait that I use, and used to use pro fishing, and it works very, very well. I've just got to wait till it defrosts. It's still, still hard. Surprisingly, I'm sitting in the shed sweating, but it's still hard. Okay, so we'll get to the bait last. I'll show you the bait last. Next is the outfits. First one I'll show you. This is my small one. This is a 50, 50 pound. You don't have to go to the top of the line. This is a little Speedmaster 10. Little Speedmaster 10, okay? With 50 pound, that's a Osha or oh, Grappler. Might be Grappler, I think. Grappler braid, so it's nice and thin braid, 50 pound. That's got an 80 pound leader on it. This is on a Therese rod, a little Therese rod. And this is a 50 pound, it is, it's a 30 to 50 Therese, okay? That's a, just a nice, beautiful little outfit. It is, it is a two speed, it is a high speed reel. And a high speed reel down deep is very really hard to get up, but if you do hook a big red, simple. Just push the button in, just start cranking, guys. Just start cranking, cranking as the fish gets up. And as it gets a bit higher in water column, it becomes really easy. When it comes easy, flick the switch and just start cranking. Get the fish to the bait away from the sharks. So a little Shimano Speedmaster, that's a 50 pound stick on a Therese 30 to 50 pound rod. Nice little outfit, that's the little rod. And if that's not stopping the fish, I know there's big reds out there or something else out there and having trouble or well, can't get them to the boat, then I'll just step up. This is an 80 pound outfit, okay? This is Talika. This is a Talika 12, okay? Low range, low gear. It's not a high gear one. It's a single speed. So a single speed Talika 12, that's got 80 pound braid. But once again, grapple or Oshio, one of the two. It's a nice thin 80 pound. And this is on a custom made Calstar rod. I know a lot of you guys might know Calstar, some don't. Anyway, it's a high end stick, it's a very stiff. This thing is an absolute brute stick. This outfit has pulled me out of a boat before. And I still didn't get to see what was on the other end. Anyway, that's, that's a story for another time. But, 
Um, I didn't have this rod on either. I had uh, Accurate at the time. Accurate with 80 pound on this rod. With this rod's a broomstick. Um, 80 pound on this. This. If I can't stop them on the 50, I'll always start with a small one. If I can't stop them, I'll step up to this. If I can't stop them on this, well, they're probably bloody sharks or something else I don't want to hook or don't want to catch. So this thing will do the damage. So 50 and 80, and I use overheads. I love using overheads. It's, I just prefer it. It's personal choice between the two. Um, okay. So now that you've seen you know, the rig, you've seen the outfits, the leader, um, I use, like I said, BKK hooks. I turned to BKK a while ago. They're sharp, they stay sharp, they're strong. They're just a really good hook. They're not the cheapest hook, but they're a good hook. They're worth the money. So don't, don't be skimpy on the hooks if you want to go catch quality fish. Spend some money. Don't buy cheap stuff. Really don't. Not for good quality fish. Um, okay, so in a minute we'll go to the board, we'll have a look at the board, I'll explain me little pictures and a couple of tips up there, and then I'll show you the bait, and I'll even bait up and show you how we used to bait up. Alright, I'll see you, uh, yeah, we'll do that next. Alright guys, okay, now we're up to the board, good old trusty board. I haven't got my ruler, I don't know what my ruler is, so I'll use me, I'll use a knife. <laughs> okay, so in this corner up here, okay, we've got fishing extra fast current. So when you're fishing extra fast current, like I said a minute ago, reds love current. And sometimes the current out here picks up to like two or three knots and it's really racing and most guys will go home because it's near impossible to fish. You can either use a big sinker, and I'll explain that one in the next picture, light current, but I'll explain why or how. Or you can do this other trick that I do and I know a couple of other guys do. Once you're going in the paddock, you're out and you find some red emperor, I've got a school of fish here, right? They're just grazing, they're in like 50 or 60 metres of water. They're grazing. Go Always go up current, probably 50 metres, 80 metres up current. Quite a bit up current, surprisingly. A bit further than you think, maybe even 100 metres. It won't matter too much how far, but usually within 100 metres. Work out your drift, which way you're going to go back to the water fish, but you don't drift. You go up, drop your anchor, okay, or spot lock. But if it's a hard current, you're not going to be able to spot lock. Um, the current's going to be too strong, so anchor down. Next thing we do is downrigger. That there's a downrigger with a big 8 to 10 pound ball. So basically, I'll put my secret bait on here, or not secret bait, I'm about to show you. Set the bait on. Okay, just a bait on a hook, circle hook once again. We've got a nice big long 80 pound leader to your 50 or 80 pound rod, whatever you got there. And what we do is we put the bait out about 20 meters or 20 to 30 meters, it won't really matter, 20 to 30, or like 20, 20 is a good number. And if you're using colored braid, you can you know, count out two colors, then you might have a couple of meters a leader. Okay, so count that, count out 20 plus meters, connect it to your clip on your downrigger. Let your downrigger go to the bottom, because you're in the paddock or on fairly flat ground. Once it hits the bottom, wind it up so it's about a metre off the bottom, and then put your rod and rod holder all set up for the downrigger, okay? And your bait is free swinging back here. You don't, it doesn't matter if the bait doesn't all get all the way to the reds. That's the thing with reds, they're really good, they've got bloody good noses, okay? So if you've got a bait there, this bait I'm about to talk about shortly, it smells. These reds will come to you. Okay, these fish will move up, up the current, they'll smell that bait and they'll come up and grab that. And this is fish in high current, like two and three knots, everyone else has gone home. Anchor, up away, put the downrigger down, wind it up so it's a metre off the bottom, and then a bait, just free, just free drifting in the current, 20 metres behind that ball. And these reds that you saw before here will come up the current, they'll smell that bait, they'll come up, and now I'll sit here and you'll catch Red Emperor. Okay? And the best part about the downrigger ball is there's no sinkers and no other weight on there. So when you hook a red here, it pulls out of the clip, it's you against the fish. There's no weight, it's an awesome way to fish. Okay, and that works an absolute treat. These fish won't go anywhere, they'll stay here. You put the next bait down, you catch another one. Until you lose a fish. Red emperor is one of these fish. As soon as somebody on the boat loses one, just leave. Because it'll shut down the school. The school will shut down. Don't stay there and persevere, it won't work. Just move. It takes hours upon hours for them to come back on the friggin' shoe. If you lose one, just move, like I said. And if sharks show up, and like tigers show up, just move. You're not going to beat them. They're just going to waste fish. 
But if you want to catch two or three, you don't lose one and the shark doesn't show up, do this trick, you'll catch two or three, you have a nice feed for the night and you'll get some big fish doing this. Okay, in the lighter current, and I'm not saying no current, but just a light current, if I'm going to fish with that 16 ounce or a 14 or 12 ounce sinker, this is the paternoster. So basically, big red school down here, current's going to the south, is usually going to the south along the reef, okay? So, same deal, red's down here, up current, probably 50 to 100 meters, drop anchor. And you and your mate, just paternosters on, with me bait I'm about to show you, paternosters straight to the bottom, just up here, away from the reds, you're probably 50 meters, 30 meters away from the fish. Give it five to 10 minutes. These fish will smell it, they will come to you. They will, they'll always come to you. Give it time, they will come up, and they will stay here until one of you lose them once again or a shark shows up but anchor up current away from the fish never anchor on the fish you spook the living well crap out of them and they they will shy off and disappear if you drop this anchor down next to them or through them they're gone always anchor away from them okay if you got spot lock you can spot lock but still don't i suggest don't spot lock on top you don't have to go right up here like you did with the anchor you can go here somewhere like 20 meters away spot lock just so you don't spook the fish and Put your baits down and when you're fishing a little bit of current like this that line will pull tight and like that sinker will come up a little bit so what you do is you free spool your reel and it's what we call bouncing back so that will come up and then free spool the sinker will bounce here then it'll lift up a little bit in the current free spool it'll bounce here and it bounces back you can do that it takes a bit of time it's but as you're bouncing back these reds have smelt your bait and they're coming towards you so you're going to bounce back to here they're going to move up you guys are gonna be on, okay? But once again, sharks move in, leave. If you, if you or your mate lose one, leave. They're not coming back on the chew. So paternosters with 14, no, 12 to 16 ounce sinkers, if the current's not too bad, if the current is absolutely racing and everyone's winging and bitching and going home, and if you've got a downrigger, be smart, even up here in the tropics, take a downrigger, use a downrigger fish and go fishing. It's harder to get, get your anchor to grip, but if you've got a decent anchor and you know how to anchor properly, it's not too bad in high current, and put a downrigger out and send your baits back. Don't go home. Okay, and little tips I've got here. I've got here, fish hard currents. First tip, reds love current. Second one, you've got paternoster rigs. There's the bait. The bait I'm talking about is cuttlefish. Reds love cuttlefish. And the reason we used to use cuttlefish and still do use, the guy I used to fish with still uses cuttlefish to catch reds, is because it doesn't come off the hook easy. The little fish will pick at it for a long time, but it'll stay on the hook. It stays on better than squid. It stays on a hell of a lot better than um, pilchards, obviously. It stays on better than cut baits. Cut baits will get picked away quite easily by little fish. But cuttlefish will stay on your hook for a quite a long time. The little pickers will pick at it for forever. And little pickers picking at a big bait draws bigger fish in to see what's going on. So we use cuttlefish. It's a really good bait for reds, okay? Fishing depth, 40 to 60 meters. 40 to 60 usually. Usually the deeper end of that, so we most of us fish around 60, 50 to 60, but we have got them at 40. And probably even some guys have got them a little bit closer. You will get them in closer, but 40 to 60 is usually your range to get looking at. Okay, don't always look for reef, which is true. You will catch reds on reef, and big drop off the pinnacle, you will catch them. But generally they're not a big school. Generally you might get one or two reds and that's it. You won't get a heap on like big reef. Most of the time when we're finding big schools of reds, they're out grazing. They're on the flat ground at 60 metres of water where it's fairly flat, maybe a bit shaly, you know, you know, a little bit of bait or something around. Okay, don't always look for the big chunky reef. That's a problem. People leave land here that Great Barrier Reefs out here, they go from A to B, and that whole area in the middle, they skip it, and that's where these fish are. And Nanagai, big largemouth Nanagai, like to graze too on this flat ground. They are there, you just gotta look for them, okay? So don't always look for the reef. Um, don't anchor on top of the schools of fish, as I explained here. Anchor away, up current, up wind. Use a current to bounce your baits back, as I'll explain in here. In a bit of current, if you've got those paternosters, you can, as the current's pulling your line, your sinker will lift up, drop it down, free spool. And it comes up, drop it down, free spool. That's bouncing the bait back. As you're doing that, the fish will come to you, you'll go to the fish, you know, you'll catch a few, it's good. 
Um, if you lose a fish, move. Like I said, just said, just move fish up down. Uh, get the fish up quick. Tiger sharks. Usually, you will find tigers where there's schools of red emperor. They love eating reds for some reason. The buggers. Uh, what have we got here? Reds are grazing fish. I just explained. So they're often found on the flat ground. You don't always find them out in the reef. So look around the flat ground between land and the Great Barrier Reef, all the swains. Okay. Use 50, 80, 80 pound tackle. We just went through that to hopefully beat the sharks and get the big reds up because they really do pull hard. Um, 80, to 80, 80 to 100 pound leader. So that's good. Circle hooks, 8 is a good all round size. I use and big snapper leads, like 16 ounce, 14, 12, 14, 16 ounce. Okay, so they're the tips. Um, hopefully that'll give you an idea, especially fishing down south around the Swains. That's a great, great way to find a few fish, reds. And if you see these schools, there's not always guaranteed they're gonna be red emperor. They might be nanogai. They don't quite, nanogai go hard, but not as hard as a red. But I can tell you they taste a hell of a lot better. I prefer to catch nanny's largemouth. They taste good. Anyway, guys, in a minute we'll show you the bait and how to bait up. Hopefully this bit helps. Okay, guys, the next part of this, the last part, is the bait. So as I was explaining before with the whiteboard over there, sorry you can't see me here, I did lower the camera to show you the bait. This is cuttlefish. Cuttlefish is awesome. A lot of people don't use it, but it's a really good bait. Look at this, nice smelly thing. And like, when people do use they think it's like squid. They'll cut it and they'll put it in a nice strips and they'll put on the hook in nice strips. That's all good and well, but when you do that, it gets picked away really fast and quick and this is not good. So when you're like professional fish, you've got to do things quick. So what we used to do is just get the cuttlefish, okay? All I'm gonna do is cut it straight down the center. That's it, okay? Straight down the center, guys. Just right in the middle there, in the old trusty knife. Just cut it completely and utterly in half. Like so, like that. It's just cut in half, that's it. Now, with the 8 o hooks and 10 o hooks, this is a really good cuttlefish. I probably should've used like 10 o's or something for this. It's most of the cuttlefish, you get a half the size of this, they're tiny. So with this, what we used to do, with the bigger hooks, it's just bunch it up. So you just put it on once and then just bend it around, put it on again. And usually the smaller cuttlefish, you just bunch it up like so, and then with a little bit left over. People will leave it like that and send it down, but no, 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 no. Bunch it up, bunch it up, bunch it up. Bunch it up and then you got a little bit left with your hook there. And that bit will bring the head back around and just put that through the head. Just bunch it up, guys, on the hook. Okay, just a big smelly bait like so. That's it. And when this is down, like I shown on the board, and you've got to bring the fish to you, okay? When the little pickers are here, the little pickers will come in, they'll eat the tentacles. And that's it. This big chunk of fish, I mean cuttlefish here, will stay on the hook, and I'll send out the wife to a nice big smell. The reds will come up the trail, and I'll see this big chunk and just engulf it. They really will. They won't nibble on it, they'll just engulf it. But the little fish, they'll just, all they're gonna do is pick away these little tentacles left on. That's all they'll eat. And the rest of this stuff will just be sitting there, smelling in the car, and the reds will come up and engulf it. Just bunch it up, guys. Don't cut it into strips and put it on all nice and fancy. Yeah, you're wasting that time. Reds don't care. They really don't. They see this, this is their prime bait. That'll just come up and engulf. And the little pickers just picked off the little tentacles dangling there. That's it. It's as simple as that. There's nothing fancy about it, nothing hard about it. Just bunch it up two or three times under the hook. Make the hook go around back through the head so the head doesn't get picked away. I'm pulled off straight away by the pickers. Make sure the pickers have got to work for it. It's on there. And you can see that's nice and tight and it's on there. And the pickers will just pick away their tentacles and leave the main chunk of it for the reds and the reds will just engulf it. They really will. That's it. Simple as. Nothing hard about it. Cuttlefish works wonders. Um, Squid works, reds will eat a variety of baits, they're not that fussy, just this stuff stays on the hook and it really does smell and reds do like it, they really do. This is our main bait when you're pro fishing. Uh, and so that's about it guys. Um, give a cuttlefish a go, paddle nice anchor up current, fish high current. Oh, one more tip, I didn't have it on a board, fish night time. 
if you're not scared to be out in a boat at night time, fish night time. Reds respond really well to night time fishing. And that's where we usually found our biggest ones, guys, night time. They will eat throughout the day, but if once the sun starts going down, if you're comfortable out in the boat, you know where you are and how, you're just comfortable out in the boat, fish night time for reds. Good time to try, all right? The last tip I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> um, and hopefully I'll get a boat soon and I'll be able to put some of these to practice up here. Um, not so much summertime fishing up here, it's a bit hot. Reef fishing up here, especially for reds and nannies and stuff, is better over winter. So that gives me time to go get a boat and we'll go out and give this stuff a crack at night time. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I'll see you again in the next one.